when you do this, you are a young, single uh, man, you are traveling on your own, you don't have anything to spend money on. So whatever you earn, you can save. And and if you're lucky, you, you would have, you know, food and a, a, and a roof over your head supplied by whoever you worked for. So so you could basically uh, save everything up that you uh, got when when you worked and I that is what he uh, uh, used and and then I suspect you know um, large family he had a lot of brothers and sisters so maybe you know he he was fortunate enough to 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 get a little loan from some of these as well to to get him started uh, I could just but that's me guessing here I we don't know for sure because uh, we don't have that kind of information in our archives yeah mm hmm so the next question is is, is more about uh, where did we sell the products in the beginning? Yeah, was it exclusively in the Western Europe part uh, region? Yeah, mm. or, or or was it a world war market uh, yeah. in the early? Mm. How, how, where did we sell? Them? Yeah, so uh, so very good question. Um, so 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 very so wooden toys have always only been sold in Denmark. So we've never went abroad with 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 toys until we start to do so with some of our plastic products. And that's something I'm going to talk about uh, next time when we go up in, in, in time a little bit. But um, so so of course, um, very, very early on, it's, it's, it is surrounded about, around this area, but very, very quickly we can see that, that it is basically starting to be sold all over Denmark. So, so, so within you know uh, very, very few months and within a year, we we are basically selling uh, products uh, all over uh, Denmark. We we have you know sales uh, people driving out and showcasing our products and do you want to to sell this? So so it's uh, it it it's quite uh, quickly it it, it grows uh, within Denmark. Uh, we have a question now that is uh, more about the fire. And yep. I'm not sure which fire we're talking about, mm -hmm. but uh, because there's been some fires in the Lego company, yeah. but uh, how did it start? And uh, maybe you could tell of all. all yeah. Maybe. Yes. Um, okay. So let's. Um, so it is true. So so I know I've talked about the fire in 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 42 quite a lot, but we actually have a couple of uh, other fires as well. So uh, so we have um, we have like. Um, uh, two uh, early fires in the 20s. So back in 1924, we have um, a, a fire that destroys the woodworking factory. Yeah, that's back when Ole, he's a master carpenter. Uh, so we have a fire that destroys the woodworking factory and also destroys the family home, which was right next door to the woodworking factory. And the, 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 it, is, it is actually two of his sons. One of them is Gottfried. Uh, two of his sons, Gottfried, and the other one was uh, called Carl Geo. They are playing in the woodworking factory, and they, it's like ah, it's a little bit chilly, so they want to light up an oven in the factory. Something catches a spark, and disaster! Everything burns down. No one gets hurt, but material-wise, it's all destroyed. So that was fire number one. So that's when Ole rebuilds his family home in this better building practice. Uh, style that was the house where he put up the, the first payment in front of his house uh, in 24. The year after, in 25, we have a new fire. Lightning strikes in the woodworking factory, and the woodworking factory is destroyed again. The house is saved, but the factory is destroyed again. So that's also why when I talk about the fire in 1942, that's the third one. You know, so so no wonder Ole was a little bit tired, not sure if he had the 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 strength to rebuild his company because it was for the third time, um, and that one was because it was extremely cold, and so it was actually so cold that there was some um, uh, electricity installations just outside the, the the woodworking factory, and something went wrong, and it started to catch a spark, make sparks, and then it burned down. And uh, fairly quickly, actually, we had firemen arriving, but it was so cold that the, they, the, the water in the hoses just froze to ice, you know, so, so, so they couldn't save the, 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 the factory. So yeah, that's the, that's the fires. 
mm-hmm. strong story. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, any of, of Ole's original buildings when he was uh, a carpenter, uh, are, are they still in existence? Do they exist? Yeah. And so, do you have any images? So, um, yeah, do we? I, so, we, we have a, a, a fairly poor one, but nevertheless, we have one um, uh, here. And also, we have uh, something uh, we can see. Uh, but let's take a look here because uh, so this is actually if you can uh, let's see if it's oh, possible um and so the guy with the glasses right there that's actually also Ole. but this is actually during the construction of his family home in 1924 after the first fire we talked about so so this is where he lived with his family and today uh, the the drawing next next to it is a, is a drawing of that house. Today it's still a part of the Lego Group. It is uh, where uh, my department, the historical department, the Lego Idea House, is actually uh, placed in 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 this building and and some surrounding buildings. So uh, so that is quite uh, quite something. And we also have other. Uh, houses here in 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 Bilun, uh, on the main street of Bilun. Um sounds bigger than it is, um, but there are actually a few houses also uh, built by Ole that we can still uh, see today, and of, of course the church I mentioned earlier is still here as well. So uh, yeah, we do still have buildings. Cool. Yeah. Um, I have a question here that is about the the cost of the toys. How much did the cost there was did the toys cost back yeah. in the in the forties? Yeah. So so um, it is a great question, but um, I'm 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 not sure I have the best answer because it is something that is quite tricky. Uh, it is very tricky to 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 compare prices from back then with what would that amount to in in in, in today's prices. But but just going back to to that. You know reputation we know he had as a master carpenter you know um uh, that high quality you know uh, but but it would cost you you know that there is no reason not to think that that would also have been the case with with his high quality toys so so what we believe is that that we we have been in the in you know the 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 higher price points of the, of the toy uh, industry, but it's not something we know with absolute certainty. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So let me see. We have another question here. Uh, what was the first ever recorded product made by Lego, and and do you have a copy of? In, do we have a copy of it? In yeah, we time? at least we. I can show you some of the very early ones. Uh, uh, so, so the exact first one sort of being made that can be tricky. But we do know we have a product here from 1932 uh, that we introduced that year, and um, uh, it's here. It's right here. Uh, we have these uh, wooden yo-yos. Which we, uh, we 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 sold in 1932. Uh, uh, they are uh, one of my favorite wooden toys, and and they are so because I I think there's quite a nice story surrounding them, um, because so so in that year the sort of you could say the founding year of the Lego Group in in 1932 when when that year where Ole for the first time starts to produce toys to get out of this economic crisis, um, times are rough. Um, we know that, but he also gets a little glimpt of hope because he actually has a, a nice success with these wooden yo-yos. So there's, I guess, a craze, you know, around here with 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 a lot of children wanting to play with yo-yos, and I can really relate to that. I played a lot with yo-yos uh, as a as a child in in school. I remember a craze or two like uh, like that, um, but. As s- such crazes do, they die down eventually. So all of a sudden, everybody had the yo-yos they needed. So that 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 happened at a point where Ole had a lot of unsold yo-yos on stock. So 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 suddenly he 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 couldn't sell more of these, and he had spent time and money into producing them, and he could he couldn't afford just to throw them out. So so he had to you know use his creativity a little bit. So he cut the yo-yos in half. And then he used the half yo-yos as wheels for other products because then he could, you know, reuse the the material. That's that's quite clever, I think. So so, I like that story. I really like it too. It's yeah. Quite cool, and you can yeah use yeah. them in different ways. Like exactly. That, so. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, we have a question here. Um, uh, Ole's son, you know, Gottfried originally wanted to be an auto mechanic. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. And something about that, his father persuaded him to work for the Lego company, and then his his 
this influenced his work work on the wooden vehicles and, and can so, you elaborate on yeah, the Yeah, it's, it's, really like it's true. It's true. It's uh, true. And, and it's really nice. Uh, you know, we have some very knowledgeable people out there I can hear. It is true. So Gottfeld, he did not see himself as 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 one that that would work in the Lego Group his entire life, you know. So 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 he he actually wanted he loved cars. He did that his entire life. <laughs> he loved cars, so he wanted to be an auto mechanic. Um, but out of the 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 children, uh, Gottfeld is number three out of the five children. So he's right in the middle. So he's not the youngest. He's not the oldest. But he's the one of all of the children that all sort of could see had the best ability. Uh, and also, you know, uh, showed some interest, but uh, but but uh, he really had ability for 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 doing uh, making these um, uh, products. Um, so so he really wanted to 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 keep him there. So his other some of his other brothers they were allowed to 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 go and educate themselves in other areas. Uh, they all went back and worked for the company later on, but Ole convinced Gottfried to stay and help him. Uh, instead, and but that is one of the reasons why, when he was at the technical school, at that it was trucks and cars. He sent, uh, you know, drawings of back home to his father because he had a great love for vehicles. So the much of the sign he made was uh, vehicles. Really, really nice question. Yeah, <laughs> I actually, I, um, I didn't know that story. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, our last question, Christian, yep. here. Yes. Uh, did you build the Lego bricks as a kid? Oh, God, yes, I did. I um, I did, as I think um, a lot of other Danish uh, children I did. And I also dreamt about, you know, I wanted to be uh, uh, a Lego designer. Not skilled enough for that, but um, but I, I, I did. Uh, I was a huge fan of uh, of pirates back in the day. Uh, I played a lot with the uh, with Lego Pirates, um, so so that was my favorite product line actually. So uh, so that was uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Is there a specific set that you love the most? Um. So it, the funny thing is, I, I didn't. Know you should remember the number as well. I, I yeah 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 exactly. Um, but but the funny thing is, my favorite single set is not a pirate set. So pirates was my favorite product line, but my favorite single set. Is uh, six six seven five. Um, it's a it's a sort of a black monster truck, huge four wheeler. Um, it was part of Legoland Town. Mm, perfect. So so those two were my favorites. That as a single set, just because of these huge wheels and and huge exhaust pipes. And then I had pirates as a product line that I played together with a a friend of mine a, a lot. So uh, so that's the two. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, and I think this is what we have time for, and uh, I hope you have enjoyed it as as much as I have. Uh, it has been absolutely fantastic. Um, I can't wait to to do this again uh, and and talk more about the the next part of our history. And I hope to see some of you uh, there. So thank you so much for uh, for 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 today. So. This is the end of our session and uh, our slide now will show you a little bit about the next session that we're going to do. It's on June 25th and again it's at uh, 10 o'clock and at 2 o'clock uh, p.m. Uh, uh, at uh, Central European Summer Time. Um, it, this time it's going to be about uh, consolidating plastic uh, from 1947 to 1961 and again we're going to be uh, having Christian with us to both answer questions and doing the tour. Uh, again, you need to sign up for it. So if you want to sign up for it, you're very welcome to come in and join us on this. And uh, then we have nothing more to say. Then thank you very much for joining us today here at the Lego House live session. Keep on.